In this video, we are going to show how to configure a TDL450 radio using software and also how to create a frequency file that can be emailed to an end user. The topics covered will include what equipment is needed, how to connect the software to the radio, the two methods of configuring the radio, as well as showing how the end user can load a frequency file, and then we'll finish off with some troubleshooting. To configure the TDL450 radios, we need a programming cable and power supply, TDL Conf, which is the software used to configure the radio, as well as a dongle to allow programming transmit frequencies. The following cables are required, which include the power adapter to SAE connector, the cable from mains power to the power adapter, and the programming cable, which are all available from the store. In addition, you will also need a USB to serial adapter, unless you are using a dock with a dedicated serial port. Here we can see the main power cable, the power adapter to SAE connector, which powers the TDL radio, the programming cable with LIMO connector into the radio, and ending with a USB to serial converter for connection to the computer. TDL Conf is the software used to configure the TDL 450 radios and can be used for creating frequency files. This is free to download from partners and the current version is 4.2. There is only one version of the TDL Conf software and a dongle is required to give dealers the ability to program frequencies. The dongle requires a Sentinel system driver to be installed so that it is recognized by the computer running TDL Conf. The next step is to physically connect the radio to the computer, making sure the dongle is plugged in. Then we can run the software and initiate the connection via the serial port. With the cables now connected, we can start the TDL configuration software. The first thing we want to check is that we can see the dealer tab, as shown here. This means that the software has detected the Sentinel key. If the software key is not detected, then typically you will see the tab name frequencies. Let's click on connect. Here we can choose the required settings. The default mode is serial. Choose the COM port of the USB to serial converter. Set the data rate to 38400 and click on OK. The software then establishes a serial connection to the radio and reads the configuration. Click Yes, and we can now see the TDL configuration main screen showing the current settings of the radio. We will now show how to enter frequencies, set channel spacing, region, and send the new configuration to the radio. Select the channel to be edited and enter the receive frequency. In this case, we will enter 467.0875. If the transmit frequency is the same, then just press enter on the keyboard and the frequency is copied across. Press enter again, which is the same as clicking on apply and moves to the next channel number. Repeat the process for any other frequencies. Then set the channel spacing to either 12.5 kilohertz or 25 kilohertz. Set the maximum transmit power if known and set the region code to the area the radio will be working. When all the settings are correct, click on program to apply the configuration to the radio and click yes. A message is displayed to say the configuration has been loaded. Click OK. At the end, the software gives the option to save the new configuration as a text file. The radio has now been successfully programmed and is ready for use. There are situations where the radio is in a remote location and not able to be sent to the dealer to have its configuration changed. In this case, we are able to create a radio frequency file and email it to the end user. We will now show how to create and export a frequency file. Click on the dealer tab, then click on create new DAT file. Select the model ID, frequency band and radio type and click OK. Select the channel to be edited and enter the receive frequency. In this case, we will enter 467.05. If the transmit frequency is the same, then just press enter on the keyboard and the frequency is copied across. Press enter again, which is the same as clicking on apply and moves to the next channel number. Repeat the process for any other frequencies. Then set the channel spacing to either 12.5 or 25 kilohertz and set the region to the area the radio is going to be working. The final step of the process is very important to remember. When creating a radio frequency file, you must enter the radio serial number. This gives the end user version of TDL config the authorization to write the transmit frequencies. If the serial number is not entered, then TDL config will only write the received frequencies to the radio. I click on the serial numbers manage button. Enter the serial number 
of the radio that is to be programmed and click add. If there is more than one radio then manually add the additional serial numbers or alternatively click on the import button and import a list of serial numbers from a comma delimited text file. Click OK. The frequency file is now ready to be exported. Click on the channel table export button into the location to save the file and save. The radio frequency file has been created and can now be emailed to the end user. The end user will require a programming cable and power supply. They can download TDL config, but without the software key, it will run with end user privileges only, which doesn't allow it to edit channel bandwidth, transmit frequencies, maximum transmit power, or region code. And last but not least, we will show how the end user can import the file we created in the previous step. With the radio connected to their computer, the end user starts TDL config and connects to the radio. With the frequencies tab highlighted, click the import button. Select the frequency file that has been sent via email. This loads the file with the settings previously created. You can see there is no way to enter a transmit frequency and the bandwidth and region code are grayed out. Click the program button and click on yes. A message is displayed to say the configuration has been loaded. Click OK. The radio has now been successfully programmed with the required configuration and is ready for use. One of the most common problems found is the Sentinel software key not being recognised by the computer. With the Sentinel key plugged in, start Device Manager and you should see SafeNet Sentinel hardware key listed under the USB controller section. If it's not listed, then the most likely problem is the driver. 